My guest today is Sam Basu. Sam, how are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm doing really well. It's good to see you again. Absolutely. It's been a while. Um, tell, tell me, what do you do? Well, I, uh, I'm an old man. I've been doing, uh, I've been in the industry for a You're while. You're younger I, than uh, me. <laughs> I'm a developer advocate at uh, Progress Software. I work a lot with, um, uh, you know, the tooling that makes developers more successful. Things like Telerik and Kendo UI and Fiddler. Uh, anything we can to make uh, developers more productive. Ah, yeah, it's a good company. I remember working with them years ago when it was just Telerik. Yeah. Uh, I understand you've been working a lot with mobile applications. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what's uh, what kind of tooling? There's some interesting stuff going on in the Microsoft world in the mobile space, isn't there? There is a lot going on. And it's not just Microsoft. There are other players uh, yeah. in, in the mix as well. But if you think about things from a .NET, Microsoft developer's perspective, there are definitely things that are evolving. So it's, it's a fun time to be here. Um, you were talking to me earlier about something called .NET MAUI, and I yeah. really haven't heard much about this. Um, what's going on with .NET MAUI? Okay, well, uh, before we dive into that, maybe we should uh, talk about like the present and, and why it is changing, what, what is evolving. So let me ask you this. Like, do you remember your first smartphone? My first smartphone? Uh, let me think. I did have an iPack, which was not a phone. <laughs> And then I had a uh, a Windows phone, I think it was mm -hmm. early yeah. Windows phone. I, I don't remember what the version number was. Yeah, I had a Palm Trio back in the days. Like it had oh, the that's stylus. before that. That was yeah. before the iPad. Yeah, and then I had a Windows uh, uh, Mobile. It was Windows Mobile Six. You know, and, and that's where we started, like early 2000s. And in 2007, I think uh, Steve Jobs came out with the first iPhone uh, for Apple. Uh, Android followed a few years later on. Windows did try uh, with, the, with the Windows phone, which was a beautiful UX. And, and David, you have seen me spend like a couple of years of my life on it. Uh, but it just didn't go anywhere in terms of adoption. So at this point, if you look at the smartphone landscape, uh, most people have an iOS or an Android device, right? And then you have the tablets, which is iPads and all types of Android tablets and Windows tablets. So if you are looking at this today, how do you reach those devices, those audiences, if you are a .NET developer, right? Because uh, right. .NET traditionally has been for Windows, maybe on a Mac, but you, you haven't been able to target uh, mobile devices. So this is where uh, things started maybe about five or six years back. Uh, there are other ways to reach mobile, like web technologies, but you want to do native if, if that's what you want for the best performance, for the best mm -hmm. user experience. Uh, so this is where uh, Xamarin started. Uh, this was six, seven years back. This was Nat Friedman, yeah. Miguel de Casa, those folks. Yeah, uh, they started, had a few... started as uh, Mono, I think, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. They, they started as Mono, they were novel for a while, and then eventually settled on Xamarin, which uh, to this day, like we are talking about evolving it to Maui, but the present is actually not bad at all. Um, we use Xamarin for making native iOS or Android apps, uh, or you can use Xamarin Forms, which is even easier for .NET developers because you don't need to learn the UI for these other platforms. You can just write .NET, you have a UI abstraction, and then at runtime, it is native apps um, on every device. Right. So that's the reality, and that's uh, for the last few years, it's been the easiest way for .NET devs to write cross-platform apps. Uh, but uh, th there are some little pain points in there. Uh, if uh, if we we can acknowledge um, the, the developer story could be better uh, when you particularly compare that to some of the other ways of building mobile apps. The the inner loop, which we call it, could be faster. Uh, the way we deploy to devices could be easier. The way we organize our code bases could be easier, and uh, we should be able to target more platforms than just iOS or Android. 
Mm. So with these things in mind, like Xamarin Forms right now, it's sitting on 5.0 release. So it literally has been like five years that they've been going. Um, and every year they've had like a major release and then some smaller ones. The next iteration uh, of Xamarin Forms is what we are calling uh, .NET MAUI. So this is just taking Xamarin Forms, evolving that uh, over. And we used to have other ways of uh, doing things as well. There is Xamarin iOS, there is Xamarin Android, there is Xamarin Mac. These are things where you're writing some C sharp, but you're still writing uh, the native UI stack uh, for each platform. And that still okay. stays. And this is just to kind of give developers more confidence in .NET. So that just becomes .NET for iOS, .NET for Android, and that stays. But Xamarin Forms is evolving to .NET MAUI. Okay, so it turns out I have heard of .NET MAUI. I was just calling it by something different. It's essentially the new version of Xamarin Forms. Is that right? Pretty much. Yes, absolutely. But uh, the team, uh, and I know most of the teams, uh, the PMs and the engineers who work on them, some very, very smart minds, they're utilizing this opportunity. And this is, by the way, scheduled for uh, release in .NET 6, uh, with .NET 6 coming November 2021. Uh, oh, the team is right yeah, it is. It's uh, we are getting close to an RC release. Uh, it's been a few previews from the beginning of the year. So the team is really taking this opportunity to fix some of the pain points that Xamarin Forms developers have complained about and doing things right. It's kind of a restart. And uh, one thing that's interesting is I was reading about this last night um, is that it isn't just targeting Android and iOS. It's targeting a lot more than that, right? Yes. Uh, so if you go back to what Xamarin Forms used to be, uh, the primary targets were iOS or Android. But then uh, we used to have, so when, when you write uh, your code in XAML or C Sharp, there always used to be uh, a little piece of code that sits in the background called the, called the renderer, which takes your abstracted UI and renders native UI. And Xamarin Forms has been open source since like 2016, since Xamarin became a part of Microsoft. So the community stepped up and uh, wrote renderers for other platforms. So you could take Xamarin Forms and run it on Windows, like as a WPF app or on a Mac, but developers just did not have enough confidence doing so because it was like a community supported thing. So now they're doing it uh, kind of as a first class citizen. So .NET MAUI will support four platforms to start off, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. So oh, full on des desktop support uh, with, uh, with .NET MAUI. Oh, and then because it supports the Mac OS, that means it also supports the iPad, correct? Well, right. iPad is kind of uh, comes from iOS as well. Um, right. So, uh, iPad OS and iOS are not vastly different. It's just a different oh, okay. uh, scaling, it. different form factor. Uh, so, we, we had I, uh, iPad before, but now Got we can uh, get, get to the Mac. Got it. I was drawing the wrong line in the wrong place there. <laughs> yeah, no uh, thanks for the clarification. Um, so, how does uh, how do we get started building apps with uh, .NET MAUI? Okay, so everything has been done in, out in the open. So there's a GitHub repo. Uh, it's just GitHub whack.net whack Maui. And uh, you can get started on either platform. So uh, if you're on a Mac, you can get started on uh, CLI tools, which is command line tools. And if you're on Windows, uh, they are um, requiring you to go to Visual Studio 2022 because there are some things in there that are, that are needed. Um, and um, you can get started with file new project. You get a single project. This is one thing they are trying to fix. So as a Xamarin developer, you used to have uh, a project which had lots of uh, child projects inside of it, like one for each platform. So now it's right. just one. So okay. all of your fonts, all of your images, you don't have to cater to each platform. The build system is smart enough to figure out how to do it for iOS, how to do it for Android and other things. So you get a single project and a single way to kind of uh, see a drop down of all the simulators or devices that you can deploy to and you go. So the build system is really nice and cleaned up. I see, I'm looking at the GitHub repository right now and it starts with a readme file which yeah. uh, step one is install uh, and then the doc documentation below that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, it looks fairly straightforward, especially using Visual Studio, which is a um, uh, kind of a do everything tool, right? <laughs> you yes, know, yeah, you, you can start it's, with it's, file new and there's a template for you right there. 
Yes, and again, if 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 that's not your cup of tea, you can still get started with some some of the command line tools. Essentially, what it comes down to is some of the workloads. So when you get Visual Studio, you don't want to get like everything under the sun. You get individual workloads for you know mobile development, for web, for desktop, for Azure. So this is the mobile workload, and that's going to get you all the bits that you need. Uh, because I mean, there are some dependencies that there's just no uh, kind of um, walking around it. You do yeah. need um, uh, kind of Xcode to still build your app package. You do need the Android simulator. So the, those workloads will get you all the bits and then Visual Studio can do the builds for you. What is the story for people that already have existing Xamarin Forms applications? Is there that's a migration a great question. pattern? Yes, and that's been actually worked on right now as we speak. Uh, it should not be a painful migration at all. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have done any desktop, uh, with like WPF or WinForms applications running on .NET Framework, you have those upgrade assistants, which kind of take your apps over, bring them uh, over to .NET 5. Uh, you will have a similar experience. So there's going to be a .NET uh, upgrade assistant that's going to take your Xamarin Forms app and move them over to MAUI. Uh, the changes are in the namespaces. So the namespaces are different um, okay. in terms of how the XAML markup looks like. And some of the classes are different and some of the project structures are different. So it's not uh, like five different projects, it's a single project so they can bring over all of those things. Uh, so that's been worked on right now, but um, the team uh, will promise you that it's gonna be a painless uh, migration. Did you say that there was a migration path from uh, like a WPF application yeah. to yeah. .NET MAUI as well? No, no, no. For So this is a good thing. So WPF uh, and WinForms are old technologies, right? They're right. 15, 18 years old, but you can still run them on the latest .NET runtime. So oh, .NET, .NET 5 and then going forward to .NET 6. So the upgrade assistance will make your uh, desktop applications run on the latest .NET. And then you can use some of the newer APIs, you can new, use the newer project styles, you can use some of the new uh, UI paradigms that have come along with like UWP or WinUI. So it's a matter of running your desktop applications on the latest .NETs. Okay, and is there a, um, uh, there still exists a, a Xamarin specifically for Android and specifically for iOS, is that correct? Yeah, and that's just called .NET. No, .NET for iOS, .NET for Android. Uh, so okay, that's and is big, that, are big people that are writing that, should they continue to write in that? Or is there, a, is yeah, there an yeah. advantage? If, if you're not doing, I guess I, my question is, if you're not doing cross-platform, uh, is it is there still an advantage to using MAUI? Um, no, not not really, because I mean, what, what MAUI brings to you is, well, I mean, if you're doing straight up Xamarin for iOS or Android, you still get to write that C-sharp uh, that is shared, right? So uh, as compared to you going straight up on Objective-C or Swift and writing an iOS app, this still lets you write your business logic in C-sharp. And then you're writing your UI differently for iOS or Android. So there is an advantage to sharing code, but MAUI really opens up, kind of doubles down on the code sharing part. So you're literally writing a single project, uh, a single UI stack that just gets rendered on all these devices. Got it. So Xamarin and Android will continue to exist for those people who yes. like C Sharp and are only targeting Android. Absolutely. Uh, and that's just it's... called dot, .NET for Android now. Uh, it's been renamed, okay. Or it will be yeah. renamed in uh, November, yeah. I guess, is what I'm hearing. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it sounds like you hear these things before I do. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you, you work with the team. You can you can see what they're up to. It's uh, And, and they, they are very open to community feedback. Um, a lot of other things they're doing is to kind of open up the playing field. So um, they're also changing some of the way the apps are architected. Um, mm -hmm. So today, when you have to render a button, um, uh, let's say on iOS or Android, you render a button, and that's a Xamarin Forms button, but they're opening it up to more of an interface. So uh, if you have to come use .NET MAUI, like the underlying architecture, but you want to use something different, like F Sharp, uh, there's a framework called Fabulous, which lets you write F Sharp uh, on top of Xamarin Forms. There's something called Comet, which lets you write the... Uh, so XAML and C Sharp code bases traditionally do MVVM design patterns, mm -hmm. while Comet does MVU, which is model view update. So uh, all of these frameworks can now use the same interface of a button and then be able to render the native button on every platform. And one other thing .NET MAUI is doing really well is not reinventing the wheel. So uh, Apple has, a, has had the same problem of everybody wanting to build for iOS, not too many people wanting to build for the Mac desktop. So they have a thing called Mac Catalyst, which takes, like to your point before, it takes an iPad app, runs it nicely on a Mac. 
right? Oh, so sure. they, they make that bridge and .NET MAUI is using that bridge to make your uh, iOS apps uh, using UI Kit run on App Kit with on Mac OS. On the Windows stack, uh, the latest um, uh, end-to-end UX framework is WinUI 3, which essentially is for both desktop Win32 apps as well as UWP apps. And .NET MAUI uses WinUI 3 as a native UI stack for Windows. So for both uh, of the new desktop uh, platforms that MAUI is supporting, Mac and Windows, it is using uh, very well-established uh, frameworks to reach those platforms. Does uh, .NET MAUI present any challenges for folks that are building tooling around Xamarin? People like 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 Progress, for yeah. example, builds a lot of controls. Does that yeah. mean that you have to uh, change a lot of things in order yeah. to make them yeah, compatible we, with .NET MAUI? Exactly, and it's not a challenge per se. It's an opportunity for us to kind of do the right thing. Um, again, uh, Xamarin Forms UI is constructed in a few different ways. A lot of it is native UI. Uh, some of it is utilizing um, kind of frameworks like Skia Sharp, which is a 2D rendering tool from Google, mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, pixels are drawn with Skia Sharp. So it's an opportunity for us to uh, ride on the latest runtime with .NET MAUI. So uh, a lot of like uh, third-party uh, UI controls are going to. I mean, it's not a huge change, but it is a change towards the right direction to get the most performance uh, to kind of make sure your UI runs on the latest stack. Oh, is it possible, for example, to run uh, older controls, like Xamarin controls on .NET MAUI? I yes. It's just less efficiently, I think, is what you're talking about. Yes, essentially, uh, there there is going to be a compatibility mode um, mm-hmm. where it, it, it you can still run an older UI, uh, Xamarin Forms UI, on top of Maui, but you don't want to keep doing that for too long because you're not okay. utilizing the latest uh, platform uh, benefits. Uh, so we are taking the opportunity to kind of redo our Xamarin Forms suite uh, to Maui. Yeah, no, I, I, I have experience with progress, and I know that they're very good about staying ahead of the curve of that particular oh, challenge. Uh, but some companies are much smaller and it's, it takes them a yeah. few months to get there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, and they have customers and uh, yeah. sometimes they no, have absolutely. to, they have to wait gonna, to upgrade. It's, yeah, it's not going to break. Um, and then there's going to be compatibility to let you still run your Xamarin Forms code. Uh, what's the best place for somebody to get started learning about this? Well, um, follow uh, some of the engineers. Uh, so the primary PMs for this are David Ortno, uh, Maddie Leisure, Gerald Verslewis. They're all over on the internets and the social medias. But start with the uh, GitHub repo like uh, like you did. Uh, that is the one place of truth in terms of all that's happening with Maui. You can see how the tool sets are getting uh, updated every preview. We're at preview seven right now, so uh, August, and we started back in January or February. We have had a preview every release or every month, and then uh, we're looking at uh, likely October, which is when we can see the RC uh, bits come out. So a lot of things happening, but start with the GitHub repo. That's the one place of truth. Excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I don't think so. I mean, Maui essentially is, it's, it's a state of mind of like surf and fun. Uh, it is redoing something that has been working well with some pain points. So again, trying to fix the things that are um, causing developer friction and try to make it easier for you to target more platforms. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, surf and fun, like like the island of Maui, which I've never <laughs> visited. <laughs> oh, it's I, not- I noticed that uh, they've capitalized the word Maui. Is that an acronym? Yeah, it is multi-platform app UI. It's ah, a ni- nice, catchy thing that they came up with. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I won't get to Maui this year, but maybe I'll get to this Maui yeah, <laughs> instead. Yeah. That'll be almost as good. Wouldn't it be nice to have like a Maui uh, conference from a Maui, Maui Code Camp? Yes, yeah. the next uh, mobile developer conference you exactly. should schedule there. <laughs> yeah. Sam, it's been a delight talking to you. Thank you so much for Absolutely. your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You stay safe. If the global pandemic has taught us anything, it is to value our developer communities. Uh, Amazing things happen when we put technology and friends together.